All righty. There we go. Right. Ah, uh, hell yeah. Got to stretch out first. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, non-binary folks of all ages, welcome to Vancouver, BC. It is... <laughs> I'm a little blurry. It's almost nine o'clock and my camera is fucking around here. Come on. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. You know, screw it. That's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, it's... Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Vancouver, BC. You now get to listen to the next two hours of me talking utter bullshit. Hang on, I'm gonna just grab my yarn stick it up there. Frank can keep an eye on it for me. Dark Moon Clover, that is a lovely username. I'm always interested in why people choose the usernames that they do. That one sounds like something out of anime, if I just had to guess off the top of my head. Hello, KK, how's it going? Starting students, yeah, I know, it's, it's fancy. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how, how just, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, top tier at this point. <laughs> Hi, Shana Runner, how's it going? Uh, I have not seen you guys online, but I have been basically off Twitch for the last, what, I don't think, ooh, uh, like about a week or so, because my, my, my parents, my parents have visited from Ireland, and I've been doing the whole parent visit thing, which has been lots and lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, everyone's here for the bullshit. Daz, hello. Very nice to see you. Good kitty. Crowbar scout houses. <laughs> oh, for once you're in and you're not just like <laughs> Yeah, for 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 once you you're here and not just immediately lurking, you're actually saying hello. Hi, how's it going? Nice to see ya. Two hours of joy. Top tier bullshit. Yes, I am in fact top tier bullshitter. I, I do my best. I, I honestly do. My mom is my mom is an interesting person, you know? Interesting person. Because just, you got to, th you, seriously, you got to consider the amount of time that it took me to actually explain what the Twitch was. <laughs> and I kept having to say, listen, listen, it's like live TV, okay? But you get to talk to the viewers, all right? <laughs> she did her best, you know? She was, she thought, she said it was, she said, I think, like I asked her afterwards, she said it was a lovely experience. She thought it was lots and lots of fun. Um, she still kind of didn't really know what was going on. But, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know, my mom's, my mom's great. She's fun. Hope you guys are all doing very well. How do I already have 12 viewers? Oh my God, it's only 10 to nine. What are you people all doing here on a Sunday night? Have you got nothing better to do? Don't answer that. I'm sure you do. But whatever, you're here and that's the important thing. And I'm doing corner to corner crochet making a bag because when am I not making bags on stream? I think we all understand this. At this point, about 90% of my time is essentially making bags of some, of some form or another. Fun fact, since last week, I've made four. Because, yes. Then you know it is from a poem I wrote as a teen. Moonlight cares not to shine upon these tears. And my nickname has always been Clover. That's lovely. That is, that's delightful. Moonlight cares not to shine upon these tears. That is really very poetic. Big, big, big applause. I like that. Big uh, ups or, you know, however that works. I don't know. Oh, thank you very much for, for the follow as well. I don't have this... You know, the overlay stuff, like in the things that pop up and say like, cool, just, hey, look, just with the, the hey, look, someone fun. Yeah, I don't have any of that because I'm low tech and I'm, I'm not good at Yoli tech. I was good at Yoli tech for a while there. I'm not good at tech anymore. I have, I have become a Luddite, not by choice, mostly by the application of brain drugs and a few other things. Anyway, it's been an eventful week, I have to say. Quite, it's been, it's been interesting, it's been interesting. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do some counting, and then we're actually going to talk about... Ah, come on. Eight, nine, ah, ten. Right. Okay. Now we're done with counting. There. There are streamers with analog areas of paper size. There we go. Yeah, just so I wouldn't be surprised. I absolutely would not be surprised. Uh, for anyone here who doesn't know already, this is Frank. Frank is channel mascot. Is the channel mascot and also my business manager. 
to use here to make sure that I don't get too rowdy and also don't do anything really actionable. Um, Frank is a, a great asset to, you know, to to the the whole the whole you know to the stream. He he keeps things running very well. I like to say. Occasionally complains about my swearing and yep, there's some of the inappropriate things I tend to talk about on stream. And as I've told him many times, look, you have to let the talent do whatever it does. It's fine. Yes, Frank is indeed fair but firm. He is also very cute. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's asleep on the job. He's he only looks like he's asleep. He's actually quite attentive. Trust me. Oh, and for anyone who cares, today we have cherry bubbly. Apparently, everybody but me hates it, and I'm on board with that because it means more for me, which is the important thing. All the cherry bubbly for me. Now we need to attach this such that it does not wrap or get twisted which is always an ongoing issue with crochet. I just, yeah, I've got to twirl everything. And you see, if I get this wrong, or push it in the wrong place, then things will just get tangled up and then it'll make it absolutely impossible to actually do this fucking handle. And then we're never going to get onto the other bag. And where will we be then, I ask you? Okay, hold on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Not where you're twisted. Turn. Da, da, da. Okay, right. Now we're good. Now we can start in the sure and happy knowledge that we are not going to be crying later. There we go. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we're, now we're motoring. Now we are cooking with diesel or something along those lines. I don't know. I'm kind of running out of analogies at this point. How is the cherry? The cherry's delicious. The cherry's delicious. It's just apparently nobody else but me likes it and I don't particularly care at this point. Yep. So I have had a very interesting, very busy week. And yeah, I know, I still don't have a bubbly command. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I swear to God, Matthew, I, was, I will do it by next week. Probably won't. But I'll try to do it by next week. I just, seriously, seriously, I, I, I absolutely will. It, it's just, it's going to be an investment of time. And my brain is already kind of frazzled because like shit went down. Let me tell you. Okay. Shit absolutely went down over this week. Oh joy, I live next to a major road. The workers have been resurfacing asphalt for weeks. Today at 5 a.m. they started removing the huge excavate. Oh dear God. That's that's a whole thing. And you have my deepest sympathy. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. Next week, every Yeah, just just look, 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 look. This week has been interesting, people. It has been it has been interesting and it's been weird. Because so so here's the problem. Here's the problem. Okay, here's a, here's a yieldy issue, okay, is, as some of you may know, I have a problem with the brain, all right, and same reason that I'm a lot out is because I used to be a senior full stack dev. I used to be a very, very techie person and no longer a techie person because the brain essentially went completely sideways on me. And, you know, stress, burnout, mental breakdown, and long story short, I can't code anymore. I can't really do anything technical anymore because when I try to do anything technical, my brain just has a big old brain fart and everything goes completely sideways on me. And, you know, it's it's something to get used to, and, you know, and I thought I was doing okay. And then, dear friends, my VPS got hacked. Oh, there was fun and hijinks at that point. So if any of you don't know, a VPS is a virtual private server. Okay, I host mine on DigitalOcean, uh, on a on a Do droplet, and this is basically just like it's essentially not a real server. It's like a server on something else. It's like a fake server, but it's still for the for the purposes of actually running websites. It is as about as real as it can get. You know, it's just like you know containerized, and it's like a little instance of a server, like a server program, as opposed to being an actual physical server because nobody does that anymore. That would be nuts. Anyway. What happened is some shit went down with one of the sites on my VPS and a WordPress vulnerability, because it is always WordPress in never anything else, uh, essentially caused someone to, to load a, like a shell script onto my server. And it was done using like automated means. It's literally just like someone exploiting a vulnerability within WordPress to compromise the, the, the WP core files. And they uploaded a thing, like essentially a... a like an, like a shell that would have allowed them to upload arbitrary files or whatever onto my server. Okay. Now I caught it almost as soon as it happened. All right. But the nature of these particular attacks is that like they essentially take copies of this fucking shell script and upload it fucking everywhere. And 
that's bad because it means that scrubbing it is an utter pain in the bollocks, okay? It is fucking annoying and fucking impossible. Now, now here's the thing. Normally, this would just be annoying. It would be like, okay, I'm taking my server down for a while, doing a bit of scrubbing, and then putting it back up and everything is all fine and dandy. And the thing is, the thing is, my friends, is that when your brain is not working properly because of, you know, basically having just you know, burn up, burn up, break down, et cetera, et cetera, it means that it makes it very hard to actually do any of that stuff. Like unhacking a site suddenly becomes really fucking hard. OK, now, the good news is that when it happened last, ooh, let me think. Last Thursday? No, wait. No, it was the week before that. Yeah, okay. So, about a week and a half ago, right? When it actually happened, I was just like, I had enough brain in me, right? I had enough kind of, like, sense or whatever, and just, like, ability to do tech that I got into my VPS using Yoldi SSH um, connection. Uh, it's just basically a command line access that can only be done through a special private key that only I have, etc., etc. This is about the most secure way to access the server. It's it's fine. It's good. Okay. So I get into my beloved VPS using that thingy, and I take a look of it, and then I swear at length, and basically at that point, about as much as I could do was take Apache offline. So I shut down my web server, all right, the web server program, and that means that effectively I took all of my sites offline, all right. And it's like, it's like gone. They are no longer on the interwebs. They are no longer accessible by anyone, not even me. And that, and you know, that was kind of a hard choice to make, but it was also a necessary choice because I was just like, well, I fucking can't do much of anything right now. I might as well take emergency measures and just get the sites down and then figure it out later. Okay. And at that point I was, I, I was just like, well, shit, because I can't fix this. Okay. I totally can't fix this. Not because I don't know how to, but because any time I try and do this kind of tech shit, my brain goes utterly off the rails and I end up having a panic attack. Okay. And I I tried. Okay. Like just, you know, early last week, all right, while my parents are still around, I tried to to do something with it, you know, to get it, get into through SSH and see if I could do some cleanup. All right. And long story short, I couldn't. And I had another panic attack. And my mom had to basically spend a while talking me down from utterly freaking the fuck out. It, it was not fun, okay? So just just in case I was, you know, kind of hoping that maybe my brain was a little less screwed up. Nope, not the case. Absolutely not the case. I still have the brain weasels and they are kicking any time I look at anything that even vaguely resembles computer code. Yep, it's whole thing. It's like such a such a thing. Anyway, anyway, story, because we're obviously we're, we're in the middle of story time here. Story time will continue regardless. Okay, so... I, you know, after, after the episode, I was like, okay, I still need to figure out something, you know, and I got onto another hosting company and just basically said, hey, I need, I need some kind of hosting that means that I don't need to do anything because clearly I don't have the ability to actually take care of a server anymore. All right. And yeah, like I got my sites back online essentially with the help of a very nice company that let me pay for three years of hosting upfront at a fairly hefty discount. And like, yeah, no brain weasels, man. It's just it's it's a fucking thing. I gotta. I I don't know how I'd represent that in a mode form, but like I'll figure something out. I may even make a, I may even make a T-shirt that says brain weasels because why not? Anyway, so they they essentially gave me gave me a hand, gave me some shared hosting. Like, they're, I'm not the one running the server, they're keeping the server going. All I basically have is a couple of WordPress installs, and that's about it. It is the most basic shit possible. I managed to get my sites transferred. I didn't have to do any coding. It's all through cPanel. It's all done using, you know, ye olde website interface that doesn't look anything like code because it's been built to be user-friendly and all that. So, right now, my sites are back up online, all right? Which is really the important thing. My sites are back up, all right? I have one site which I could not run on shared hosting because it's essentially the the vintage, like the 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 thing I made myself for tracking all of the vintage crap I buy, and that thing I had to put onto my old MacBook <laughs> because I couldn't get it to run on this MacBook, which is the new M1, <laughs> and. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to get a website running on this thing or any kind of virtualization thing or whatever, but like I spent a solid day trying to get this shit to work and I nearly threw up because I was so stressed. It was, it was fucking nonsense. 
I'm just like, I'm never ever trying to do that again because it was literal hell trying to get anything to run on it. And like, if I was in a better brain space, I'd say I'd probably have another go at it. But but I was at the point where like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore without just like, I'm literally going to throw up and then crawl into bed and cry for the rest of the day. I just couldn't do it. And I eventually got that up and running on the old MacBook using tech that I swear I have not seen in, I don't know, 10 years because, because it's fucking old. <laughs> okay. Lamp stacks are old. Let, let me tell you. But the important thing is that it's running. All right. I'm going to shut down my, my digital ocean account. I'm not going to need it anymore. I can't use it anymore. Oh, well. <laughs> M1s are fun. Yeah. But like, apparently the new chip is just does not work. It's like, it's a lot of the virtualization stuff doesn't work at all. And I'm like, holy shit. I'm so glad I didn't buy one of those as a dev machine now because I can't get VirtualBox to run on them. Like, doesn't run Vagrant, doesn't run VirtualBox. All your, all my VMs would be toast. Like, shit, that's a whole thing. Uh, I guess, I guess no more Mac dev machines until they sort that shit out. Wow. Sucks balls, let me tell you. But that's essentially neither here nor there, my friends, because I am no longer a coder. I am officially not fit for purpose, even though, for what it's worth, the Canadian government still isn't still isn't getting isn't talking to me about that and still hasn't given me like unemployment benefits so who the hell knows i was literally looking at like oh hey you know i should probably get like a part-time job or something to you know so that i'm not burning through all of my savings and <laughs> that's going to be a whole thing as well because like i i'm it's going to be really interesting okay just see just you know this is going to be super interesting and also really funny okay when i go into some random shop or whatever and say hey I want a job. You want shop staff? Sure, I can do that. I can work retail. Just, can you give me a job? And they're like, sure, what's your resume? And I'm like, oh boy, I can give you my resume and it'll be the most irrelevant shit you've ever seen in your life and you're going to think that I'm nuts. And we may need to have a conversation about that, but yeah, I just, I can give, just I can give you the resume if you really want, but just just understand that nothing on it's going to make sense because it's all programming related and you're going to really question why I'm standing here. There's just, it's, it's going to be interesting, right? It's going to be interesting. I don't even know like how, I don't even know what kind of response I get. I'm wondering if people are going to actually laugh at me or something because I was on Craigslist bumming around as you do. By the way, if you ever want to laugh, I highly recommend going on to the community section of Craigslist and looking at the missed connection stuff. There is a novel in every single entry. I'm telling you what. <laughs> but anyway, on Craigslist, bumming around, looking at the different gigs and jobs and other kind of random blast crap. And apparently there is, I kid you not, a rock shop opening <laughs> not five minutes drive from me. And they're looking for part-time sales staff. And I'm like, wow, well, you know, I do have a degree in geology. Would they, well, I wonder, would they be interested in having someone who has a degree in geology? <laughs> and I do know a fair bit about rocks because I used to collect minerals and rocks and shit, okay? Literally, my handle, all right, back when I was in college was Irish Rockhound, all right? Like, if you go onto the old um, EVC forum or whatever like that, if you ever see any posts by Irish Rockhound, that was me, you know? Because <laughs> that was my, that, cause that was that was my handle back when I was, you know, doing my geology degree. I was the Irish Rockhound. Like, and, and, you know, it was, it was just, you know, fun. <laughs> fun. <laughs> but, yeah, it was just like, sure, you know, I could say, you know, I could do that. That'd be kind of interesting. Oh, you just need an ARM? Yeah, okay, so that, yeah, that's that's the thing that I heard. You need an ARM version, but, like, apparently trying to run an ARM, it's like the ARM images, even of the, you have, like, your your average LAMP stack, apparently the virtualization is just shockingly shit. And it was all kind of a bit irrelevant because I couldn't get VirtualBox to run at all. It just didn't work. I was like, well, fuck me, I guess. <laughs> you know, like, all you need to know is I could hang up closer stack cans. Exactly, exactly. All you, all you need to know is that I used to, like, I so, I mean, I used to wear a lot of hats. Let me tell you what. I used to be the manager of five computer stores in Ireland, all right, before I ended up getting into tech. This is back in the before times, okay? This is, well, I mean, this is back before I came to Canada, all right? That's how long ago that was. I also used to be a bartender. I worked in Irish pubs for a very long time. Um, that was before I was even in college, you know, it was kind of like the part-time jobs I used to do. I used to work in Chinese takeaway, late night Chinese takeaway in Ireland, uh, working until three o'clock, serving drunk people with like, you know, sweet and sour chicken and, and all that kind of stuff. And 
<laughs> you still lost. I used to be a graphic designer as well. I've had a lot of careers and not all of them have been actually relevant in any way, shape or form. It's just, yeah, it is a great username. I know, right? I only ever use it like for a short time. And then when I got out of college, I kind of stopped using it, you know, so you started using 8th or 11 and that was like, that was it, I guess. But like, you know, it was still, it was fun, you know, great times. Oh my God, I'm doing this wrong. Oh shit. I'm, oh, I'm stupid. I'm going the wrong way. That's why this isn't working. What in the world? What in the world are we like? We got to back the bus up here. I knew there was something not right. It was this way. I'm going down the wrong side. And I realize that none of that's going to make sense unless you're actually looking at this thing. Just, just trust me. Okay, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. But it's okay because we're fixing the mistake. We're fixing the mistake. We have backed the bus back up. And now we're going to do it right. It's okay. This is really lovely yarn, by the way. This is the same stuff that I made my uh, the bag of storms out of. Except I'm not doing like left and right handed crochet. I'm just doing like straight right handed crochet in this case. And like I saw another two skeins of this stuff and I thought I have to get it because I like working with it so much. And it's nothing special. Okay, it is Red Heart Super Saver Generic Acrylic. Highly, highly recommended. It. It's good stuff. Don't know why. It just, it's just nice and it's fun to work, you know, it's kind of, it's fun to work, it's nice and forgiving, it doesn't really split much, you know, um, I can go down a couple of sizes on the hook and it still works up kind of nicely, and the colour pooling is really, is really interesting here, I really like it, you know, it's got a little bit of a striping thing going on, it just, it's nice, I like, I like it, it's like, it's my, it's my jam, definitely my jam. Like, I don't think you necessarily need expensive yarn to, to create pretty things. You know, yarn's for everybody. Crochet's for everybody. Why not use whatever you can get? My A woman of many talents. I have so many. Now, the only question is, can I get someone to pay me more than minimum wage for them? Therein lies the question, indeed. Like, I would love to say to be, it's like, you know, you know, one of my other random talents is, the like, the ability to identify uh, fake Louis Vuitton handbags. Which rarely, if ever, comes up because I don't really see Louis Vuitton very often, in fairness. It comes up occasionally at thrift stores, don't get me wrong, but they're usually all fake. I've seen maybe one real one. And they were selling that for, I think, $600 because they were being wildly optimistic about their chances there. But, I don't know, somebody apparently got it because it was gone the next time I was there. Overpriced and garbage, in my opinion. Doesn't come up very often, but I mean, that's just that's just like one of my one of my random talents, all right? I have many of them. Like one of the other random talents is that I can drive almost anything that's got wheels. Like I could drive a motorbike. Didn't think that was too hard. I can drive a box truck, sports car. Like I'll drive, or I mean, sit me into a car and say that's the go button, that that's the pedal that makes it go, and I will attempt to drive it. I. I've, literally no fear or common sense but yeah no it's just big trucks and everything like that and I was literally talking to my dad about that being a possible career choice me becoming a driver of trucks okay because I am just you know I just love to drive literally give me give me bluetooth and you know a decent data connection so I can listen to music oh hell yeah Oh, buddy, the one that burned down. Ha <laughs> Okay, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. Yes, 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 yes. So, the Valley Village. Okay, the burned down. Okay, so, story time. Story time, children. So, we have many Valley Villages around Vancouver, okay? I am practically on a first name basis with all of them. All right? Love them. Now, at last, I want to say... Thursday, last uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, yeah, last Wednesday, I think, Wednesday evening or Thursday evening, I can't, I'm trying to, you know, no, yeah, no, it would have been the Wednesday evening, okay, last Wednesday evening, okay, the Valley Village in East Hastings burned to the ground, and I'm not just, not, it's not just a regular burn, to burn down, or it's just a fire, but like, no, no, the whole block went up, and it burned to the ground, there's nothing left, okay, I was in there the day before. The day before. Yeah, so 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 the st so apparently what, it, what we heard in the news, all right, is that when they were closing up for the evening, which would have been fairly late, even the middle of the week, all right, you're talking like um, 
I want to say around like seven, eight o'clock. Okay. The staff apparently, the, like just as they were closing up, they found a fire in the basement. Now the basement of this particular Valley Village, right, is an absolute, was, is, was an absolute shit show of electronics. And they'd had a testing bench down there and I'm pretty sure somebody left something plugged in. It's the only reasonable explanation. But anyway, a fire of some kind started, all the staff got the fuck out of Dodge and the place burned to the ground super, super fast. Super fast. Yeah. I saw the video and everything. It was ridiculous. Whole thing just went up and like, bam, like that. And you had the fire crews essentially and all they were trying to do was just make sure the fire didn't spread to the nearby buildings because what were they going to do? The thing was an inferno. It was nuts. Literally, go on a Google, right? Or even Twitter or whatever like that. Look for Value Village Fire and you will get the videos of stuff that people put up on Twitter. They were insane. Literally insane. And that was East Hastings. I would have gone there Fairly regularly, you know, to my regular rotation. It's not that far out of my way, right? I don't go there as, like as often as, like, I go to Richmond and, and Victoria Drive fairly often. I go to Queensborough fairly often because they're just like on the way, you know, nice and accessible. I don't go to Hastings very often. Oh my God, dude. Like, I was literally in there the day before. The day before. And now I swear I'm kicking myself because when I was in there, I saw some really nice Cascade Magnum yarn that it was for 10 bucks a skein. And I was like, I should totally buy that. And I decided against it. It's gone, my friends. It's gone. Like everything else in there. It's gone. Adios. So long. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, that's the end of that, essentially. But wow, like what a fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. so many flat bubble things in there. Holy shit balls. That's just a whole ass thing. Like, now the Valley Villages in general are not, are not very well kept, I don't think. Not exceptionally well kept. Like they're they're in a lot of older buildings, and I'm not kind of not surprised the place went up as fast as it did. Like it's just like holy shit, it was just gone. It's like and again and the thing is that like I was there and I've gotten some really decent stuff out of there. And get me wrong, there the yarn in there was always worth a look. And now I'm feeling like, wow, it's just gone. I'm not going to be able to go there again. It's a bit, it's a strange feeling. Like, oh boy, I guess that's the end of that, you know? They sent 50 firefighters. Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, like, it's right in the middle of, of um, okay, so here's the thing. There's a shell station right next door. The block over is a shell station. Can you imagine if that went up as well? The fireball would have taken out, like, everything in a 50, like a 50 yard radius or something like that. The whole place would have gone up. Yes, they sent a lot of a lot of firefighters. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Like the videos are just insane. Yeah, okay, maybe one of the Formula One teams is hiring. Oh, that's the dream, isn't it? I would love to have a shot at driving a Formula One car. I just it, it just they look like such insane things to drive. Like I just I kind of want to try it. You know, I was I wanted to do the experience where like the, 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 the racetrack experience that you can do here in Vancouver, where you basically go out to the, one of the, the race with the race uh, track, I think it's out in Mission or somewhere. I don't, I don't know. And like, just do the, you know, get into a super fast car with an instructor and drive like the drive, like hell around an actual racetrack for like so many laps or something. And I wanted to do it um, for my 40th birthday. And like honestly COVID happened and then I had a mental breakdown and I was like okay so I guess I'm not doing it <laughs> yeah but wow I just thought that'd be nuts um yeah like I just like I don't know I just like driving things I like driving cars I'll drive anything you put in front of me I always thought oh yeah you know I should get my hitch you know HGV license or something like that and go drive the big trucks but that would mean actually driving across Canada and I don't think I could stand that level of like just it's not so much the the amount of driving it's the being away from the kids as long as I, I would be because that just it just doesn't sound sound like a whole lot of fun being that far away from home you know not that I wouldn't do it it just sounds like <laughs> yeah I don't know but like around Vancouver, like around, you know, Vancouver itself. No, I mean, I've been thinking about it. Like maybe there are driver, you know, people, people around here who need drivers of some kind or delivery. Like a lot of these jobs, unfortunately, require you to be able to lift like 75 pounds or something. And like, let's be clear with the state of my back, I'm not lifting that kind of, that kind of weight. Um, I'm pretty sure my physio would put a, you know, put a bounty on my head. Like... Rather than Uber or Lyft, you could try K KNH or Same Day Couriers. Oh, is that a thing? I did not know that. That sounds like fun. 
Like they got to have something delivered the same day or whatever. That sounds cool. If I had to do it in my own car, that would be a bit nuts because like, have you seen the price of gas lately? Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking about getting rid of my, my Mazda and trying to see if I can buy an electric car simply because the price of gas is utterly bonkers. Like I had to tr fill up the gas tank. OK, and not, not one joke. It cost me $140 to fill that sucker. I'm like, no, nuts. Oh, that's so nice. My trainer went home to Scotland for a 40 billion, got COVID two days. Ago. Oh, that sucks. And she couldn't fly. Oh, damn. That's terrible. Oh, yeah, that's that's the worst. It's like, oh, if you get COVID, then you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. If I was going to actually do a driving of some kind, like would I be exposed to COVID? Would that be OK? I mean, I've had it once already. And plus I have, you know, obviously fully racked and all that other bollocks. But I don't know. I just, it just—it just—it seems like a fun thing to do, you know. Same day driving. Drive your well. I mean, I don't know. Maybe during. I don't want to drive my own car. I want to drive like a, I'd like to drive a fun car, or drive something where I can just listen to music and chill. Like, there's something incredibly peaceful about driving. Honestly, if I could just be a test driver and drive really fast cars, that would be great. She was, she was all at Scotland, thank you, we a party and their various family plans. Oh no, that's the worst. Did she have to quarantine? Oh, damn. Oh, that's, that's, see, that's, that's the, that's the problem. Like if you have to quarantine while you're there, oh God, that sucks. Like that was always the big worry of my parents. They'd come over to Canada and they would get COVID and then where would they be then? They'd be in serious trouble, you know? Oh, I don't know. The pandemic ain't over, kids. Take care of yourself. Do not take risks, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of people. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so here's another, here's another weird, kind of a stupid story, all right? My dad, because my dad's into all kinds of weird shit, uh, he keeps watching Sovereign Citizens on YouTube. Now, not because he has any interest in becoming a Sovereign Citizen. He is an Irishman who... Uh, essentially just has very low opinions of, of anything to do with the right wing and he's uh, as far as I can tell quite the liberal. He likes to watch videos of sovereign citizens getting pulled over by the cops and getting absolutely curb stumped. Uh, why? I don't know. He just thinks they're stupid. Like literally the stupidest people in the world. And he loves seeing videos of the cops essentially taking these guys to the, you know, taking these guys out and <laughs> and kicking the crap out of them and it's just the strangest thing ever and I mean I he, he showed me some of these videos and I was just like dad I don't know why you watch this this is more pathetic than anything else but he's like no no no, no it's funny it's funny <laughs> yeah and he he also watches like the, the COVID deniers and stuff I kind of feel that he would get an absolute kick out of the Ehrman Cain award because it's just silly and dark enough that that's kind of I don't know kind of up his alley I guess if you're considering a new car, just look into Cadillac converter theft around you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Like, my car, for what it's worth, is in a locked garage. <laughs> like, I don't think anybody is going to break in and steal just the, the Cadillac converter off just my one SUV. It's, um, yeah. But, like, the uh, I, I know this is definitely a, a thing. I'm not hugely worried about it, though, because of where my car is normally parked. Like, I, I would never... I don't leave it on the street or anything. The thing as well is that, although I have a big SUV... Um, it's a Mazda CX-9, 2009. It's a good, solid car. It's also completely paid off. All right. It's like, I got it a couple of years ago for quite cheap because it's, you know, because it's 2009 that nobody wanted, you know. Um, and it's, not, it's, it's just a really good, solid car. The only bad thing about it is the fact that the gas mileage sucks fucking shit. Like, it's just dire on the gas. And I have to to kind of scramble to kind of get the good deals or whatever on gas. <sighs> yeah. I, I may end up getting an electric car just because I can't afford to keep like forking out $140 a go just to fill up the tank on this sucker. And and not because I'm like, I don't like, I love my car. I love my car. I love to drive as we've established. <laughs> and you know, it's the Mazda is big and chunky and you know, drives a bit like a shopping car, but it's also a luxury SUV and it's super, super comfy, like super comfy. And it's never had 
any major issue within all the time I've had it. So like, if I have to trade it in and get a fucking Prius or something like that, I'm going to be really disappointed and very unhappy. And like, there's, there may be tears, maybe tears, not going to lie. See if your insurance will cover the theft. Someone at my job here got stolen several times. Insurance paid every time. Oh yeah, I know, right? I to be honest, I don't know. Like I have whatever the standard insurance is in Vancouver. I can't remember. Like you gotta have some kind of a minimum thing, and I covered for liability and blah blah blah. I don't know. Last time I looked, it cost me about a hundred dollars a month to have insurance in Vancouver, which is pretty good, you know. But I've been driving a long time, you know, and I don't really use my car for much Not anymore. Anyway. This is why I'd kind of want to work for a company because I want to pay for insurance. <laughs> like, work for somebody else, let them pay the insurance in the car or some of the crap. I don't know. How are you doing? Drop frames. Hey, we're pretty good. Oh, come on. What am I doing? Let's. What are you like? Right. We are going to finish this bag and then I may start another one or I may attempt a very interesting crochet method that I just learned about today. And I may want to show you guys about it. It's effectively somebody, I saw a video on the crochet subreddit of someone who learned how to crochet from watching her mother, who was right-handed, across from her. Okay, so the way that she, she was left-handed, so the way that she learned how to do it is that she essentially crochets upside down with her left hand. Like, like I'm not kidding, like she, she crochets right-handed, as in the, the, the output is what we would consider to be right-handed crochet, okay? But she does it with her left hand because she does it upside down. Now, if you know crochet, think about that for a minute. Think about that for a minute. Does it sound nuts to you? It should, because it's nuts. <laughs> and it's I've never heard of it before. Literally never heard of it before. Um, it, and, it, and I saw it, I was like, damn, yeah, you could do that. You could, couldn't you? It would just like, everything would be upside down and back. Like everything would just be rotated 180 degrees, but you could do it. Like, I can't imagine what it must be like her reading patterns. She must just turn them all off. <laughs> you have your finger on the pulse of crochet culture. I would I, I would say so, although, cro like, for what it's worth, crochet culture in the Western or English-speaking world is boring as fuck because it's all granny squares. Like, I'm just, I'm not about the granny squares. I'm about the corner to corner crochet. I'm waiting for corner to corner crochet to get a resurgence. It's looking like it won't be, so it's going to be up to me, essentially, to carry the torch for it because nobody else is interested. It sucks sucks balls like you would not believe like this is corner to corner crochet all right this is corner to corner crochet i love it i love the squares i love the texture i love the way that I can make things with it i love the the way the, the pooling always comes out kind of interesting with it like it, it is it, it is lovely i i it is my jam and nobody does it <laughs> nobody does, well nobody does it except me and i feel like i'm gonna have to just start doing or trying to do weird interesting things with it just because no one else really is doing weird interesting things with it. everyone just makes boring stuff with it or they use it to do you know like pixel art or you know like colorway stuff or whatever and it's like come on there's things that you can do with it that's are that's cool and and interesting and like and I make bags with it yeah but you can do a lot of stuff with it uh, yeah I gotta put together a new design or corner to corner crochet. I got got some ideas. I want to try and do um, like a different kind of bag because I'm doing the same pattern kind of over and over again with this. Yeah. Someday I'm gonna learn. I keep losing the funny books. I also lost yarn. How do you lose yarn? Oh, just like don't don't ask that question. I lo I lose yarn all the time. Like, and it's not because like. Like I put it down someplace and I can't find it. I have too much yarn. And I'd be looking for some specific yarn and realize that I cannot find it because my sash is once again overflowed. Yeah. I am not short on on yarn. I keep buying more yarn and I should probably stop that. I say, knowing full well I absolutely will not. Yep. My answer is ADHD. I only have one thing. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, yeah, possible. I, I, I do not have ADHD. I have OCD. Um, I don't know if that helps. It certainly does not help with the storage of the yarn. I keep because obviously I keep losing yarn, <laughs> or I'll go to look at it until I try to find it, and I'm like, oh, damn it, where did I put that? Uh, no. Fun fact: my mom thinks that I am obsessive about crochet, and she thinks that that's not a good thing. And 
I don't know what I kind of didn't want, didn't really know what to say about that. She was like, you should do something other than crochet. You should go out and take walks. I'm like, why would I go outside? <laughs> She's like, you know, get some fresh air, you know, it's just like, you know, get, you know, just get relaxed and everything. I'm like, okay, I, I find being around other people to be actively stressful up to a point. And if I want to relax, I will not be going out and taking walks. <laughs> like, because there's, you know, there's stuff out there. And, and I mean, even in Vancouver, it's, Vancouver, by the way, is pissing down rain right now. I'm like, no, no, walks are for normal neurotypical people. I'm going to stay in and do horrible things with yarn. And, you know, occasionally watch like videos of people doing things with yarn. Like, I'm just not about that. I'm, I'm not about that life. I'm not about that walking life. You have to learn how to walk and crochet. I can, I can walk and crochet at the same time. Um, I generally only walk and crochet at the same time when I'm with other people because then I can talk, walk and crochet at the same time. Because I think it looks weird if I'm literally just walking around the place crocheting. I think people will get ideas, you know. They'll, they'll think I'm gone a little bit funny. And they are right, but I don't want to encourage them. Like, that's, it's just, it's just not. <laughs> I, I actually think that more people should get out and, and do crafts or crochet or knit, like, you know, in, on plein air or whatever you want to call it. Like, basically get outside and do it. Uh, I think it adds to the experience of, of crocheting, like, outside in in nature kind of a thing. And I know in the case of your painting and everything like that, it's like, oh, you know, just go outside and you paint in, in nature and, you know, paint what you see and all this other kind of stuff. But I, no, I mean, you're, you, bring, you bring your stuff with you, obviously, when you crochet outside. It's just that it, it kind of changes the experience, I think. Um, and you have different considerations, obviously. Now, which brings me to the whole, I need a new fucking case, travel case, essentially, for doing crochet, because my basket is definitely not cutting it anymore. And obviously, because I am a maker of bags, I will have to make my own crochet travel bag case, whatever you want to call it. I have plans, dear friends, plans and indeed shenanigans, mostly plans, though. I have this idea for the bag. And I think I may have posted it on Instagram at some point. It was like the sketch that I did. And I thought I would originally do it out of, make it out of leather or even out of wood or something. But I think I won't bother. I'm just going to go the whole hog and I'm going to make it out of, I'm going to make it out of yarn. I'm going to crochet that motherfucker. You know, I'm going to crochet it and it's going to be a maze balls. And I'm going to have to use some kind of thick kind of cord of some kind. I will be lining it, I think. But I will have to use cord because the outside of it is going to have to be somewhat kind of dirt resistant or at least it won't pick up dirt it would also be nice if it was waterproof but I have very little hope of it being waterproof I think that is a pipe dream I will do my best to make it waterproof I make no guarantees and I think we're almost done with this bag now yeah we are nearly almost done with this bag how about that now let's see where are we here yeah, I don't like how that, I don't like how that moves. Yeah, I don't like how that join is working. I'm going to have to maybe rethink that. But that is, that is a job for the next pack. As, oh, I got the wrong. I made a promise to myself. It's like, no, never, never look backward, only look forward. You know, make something and if it doesn't work, put it to one side, sell it, do whatever you want with it, get on to the next thing. Never, ever look back. If something is made, you iterate upon it. But I generally try not to make this. No, I don't make the same thing too many times because I would get absolutely bored out of my bollocks. It would just be nuts. I would, I would go mad. I, I'm, I'm not doing that. Okay, here we go. A stitch. Came together. Clippy, clippy, clippy. Bam. Whoop. And now we start the weaving in of the ends. Ah, fun times. So that took, like, yeah, this is a, yeah, I think I'm not, don't, I'm not going to have enough to maybe do another full bag. I'm going to have to maybe try. I don't know yet. We shall have to see. But we'll do this first of all. Why not? Weedy any all the innies. Oh, um, where's the wise of any of you are crocheters? Please do look up TL Yarn Crafts on the YouTubes. Um, 
because I watched one of her videos about crochet tips and tricks and got really pissed off at myself because I was like, I am bad at crochet. How did I not know all this other clearly very obvious stuff? But anyway, found it super useful. And now I just want to tell everyone about her because like she is a maze ball. So you should totally go follow her. Um, she had just a lot of really interesting tricks. One of them was actually the whole how to weave in ends successfully. And it was something that I started doing already, but it was like really nice to see like validation that that is really the correct way or the most, you know, the, the way to, to weave in ends such that, such that they don't come apart as easily. Because I have, oh, excuse me. I have real fears about my ends coming out. It's just like, I think about it, you know, I think about like, I like, I'm just, it's the embarrassment of like my ends coming out. I'm just like, oh, I don't know. It, it would be bad. Okay. Nearly done with this. Ah! Am I doing it on this side? Yeah, I'll do it on this side. Do it nice and nice and tight. Let's put it over there. Concentrate somewhat. This, by the way, I'm calling this particular pattern the Bag of Roses because I just looked at the colorway and thought that is a lovely colorway and it kind of reminds me of, of roses. Someone actually said, oh, you know, maybe it's a bit like, you know, Christmassy or something. And I'm like, no, where did you get that from? No, look at these colors. These are roses. I'm not nuts. Fucking roses. Pointing finger. Yeah. Hey, just want to be clear about that. Totally roses. That would actually be the really cool name for a cover band. Totally roses. How about that? Okay, let's see where we're at. Ah, come on. No, okay, we're gonna go, okay. All right, fine, fuck you, we're going in the side. I don't mean it, you're nice yarn. I totally don't mean it. I would maybe mean it in some respects. I still have the hate fiber. I still don't kind of don't know what to do about it. And I'm afraid that my, my, my neighbors are going to call the cops if I actually do set it on fire. So I need to maybe take it someplace and surreptitiously set it on fire. I haven't quite decided yet. All right, for what it's worth. If anyone doesn't know, the hate fiber is this cotton urine, which something happened to it. We're not entirely sure what. And now it is unworkable, my man or God. And it should really needs to be put out of its misery. And I've taken it upon myself to do it because frankly, I've done my time. I never want to work with it again. Come on. Ah, come on. Okay. So, all right, I'll just show you this, this thing real fast. All right. So if you actually want to weave in an end, all right, I have an end sticking out here. Okay. You can see it's, that, that's where it's sticking out. And I have a row of single crochets here. And I'm essentially going in through the back loops, the back Vs, if you want to call that, the back Vs of the stitches. You go through, pull that through there. All right. And then when you actually go back, you skip one of the stitches and go back in, back along the same loops that you pushed, that, that you pulled the, the tail through. And let's just bring it up. Ding and the stuff. Come on. Go over there. Yeah, okay. So there you go. I'm going back through the same row, except that I've skipped one. So it's caught there and it's kind of, it's not quite a knot. It's quite flat, but it's, it like, it is now very sturdy. You can clip, clip it off there. Weave an end. Gone. Nicely done. Don't need to worry about it now. That's probably not going to come out. Okay, here we go. I have one end, two ends here. Let's see. What have we got? No, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Uh, I don't actually know if anyone else has been watching as well. I was watching AGDQ during the week um, because I fucking love it. Like AGD, like GDQ, the games don't quick stuff. Like I really do love speed running. I think it's like, I keep explaining it as being like, this is like the Olympics for video games. It's cool. It's like interesting, like all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. It's like, it's, it's far better than it has any right to be. And it's really super entertaining. Plus they raise money for charity, et cetera, et cetera. And like, they put on a really great show and they put in some fabulous runs and like I've got a whole bunch of odds to go back and watch and I watched some stuff live and I was glad that I did and <laughs> I'm always looking for the 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 awful or silly games done quick blocks 
because you see shit there that makes no fucking sense. <laughs> and one of the games that I saw was called Thunder in Paradise, which is essentially a, like an FMV style game. It's just videos strung together or right, whatever. And it has Hulk Hogan in it. It's like from the 90s, like early 90s or something. And I'm like, I can't believe this exists. And I can't believe that someone found it and decided to speed run it. And now it's been brought here for, for the amusement of all. <laughs> it was just insane. And there were topless guys in it, you know, which is, which is really all you could ask for at, at, a, at a speed running event. You know, it's just, I don't think, I don't think you can ask for much more than that. All right, let's do this. This is the last end now. Carefully, carefully, carefully. Leave, leave, leave in. That's about as far as I need to go yet. There we go. Why are you puffing up there? Oh, the yarn is split. Fuck, fuckity, 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 the yarn is split. After I was just saying that you didn't split much at all and now you go and betray me. What are you like? Seriously, what are you like? What what shenanigans is this? Oh my god, I'm going to have to go and fix it now. Like, you see what the crap I have to put? You see what I have to put up with? What the hell is this? Okay, come on. Just, alright, look. Okay, look, 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 look. We're going to reply you. We're going to reply. It's going to be fine. I don't know why... Why that was a thing. And let's just twist this all back together. And hope things don't go completely bullshit on us. Come on. You gonna go back together? You gonna go back together? Where are you? Where are you? No. Oh, son of a bitch. All right. All right, fine. Fine. Be that way. I hate you too. I don't, but look, come on. You gotta work with me here. Now, are you split or not? You are not. Oh, okay. You know what? There's enough of the tail that's still intact that we can just like, we can just weave it in and call it good. It's just, it's not going to be perfect, but you know what? Nothing is. Nothing is. We might as well just put up with it and move on. Fucking annoying. All right, let's go. Okay. All right. See, there's another end there, which is kind of like, did I do a good enough job weaving that in or not? Apparently I didn't. This has come out. Um, this is what I mean about having like fears related to my, my ends coming out. They shouldn't do that. And yet some of them do. And they give me anxiety. All right, here we go. Pull that through. And use clippy clippy. There. All right. Okay, there we go. Put that over there for a second. Move you out of the way. Excellent. Okay, so here is our bag. Here is the, the final kind of bag, I say. I still don't have a good kind of solution for the chunk here where the actual corner gets woven in. I've got to redo the pattern. Not sure how I'm going to do it yet because all the patterns essentially have to be worked like diagonally. So whatever I come up with has to be worked diagonally as well. This I think is, is good. This is like a, this is a good solid market bag. Like it's got a nice kind of feel to it as well. The pattern is nice and even. It's just like you could, there's a little bit of unevenness here. If you can see the join where that corner comes in and it's, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's not that bad. It's not really that noticeable, which is neither here nor there. I'm going to work on a pattern so that it's not noticeable at all, which is kind of, you know, what I'm kind of, what I kind of want to do. I want to do more, like, I like these bags, but I kind of want to do them in a few different shapes and see if I can come up with something nice. And much as I like this kind of, this shape here, I don't know if I want to do that all the time. Or maybe if I want to do something that's more kind of three-dimensional and put a base into it or something. I don't know yet. Like, I made, swear to God, I made four bags or something this week. And I did some corner-to-corner -corner crochet in the round. And I don't know if anyone else does that or if it's just me. Okay. I just said, hmm, I have this bag. I kind of want to do corner-to-corner -corner crochet in the round. 
And I was just like, fuck it, let's do this thing. And I just started doing it, you know. And presumably, presumably it's not that hard if I can just kind of bang it out. I don't know yet. We'll have to see, I guess. Anyway, I have some wooden bowls that I actually want to, to work on. Oh, excuse me. Ugh. I have some wooden bowls that I have, that I kind of wanted to work on. And, when I, and the, the plan is, is that I'm going to drill holes through the, the bottom of the bowls. And I'm going to work a bag on top of them. And I kind of need to need to make at least one just for my own use. Because I have to test drive essentially all of my bags to kind of work out if they are a good pattern or not. I think this is a good pattern. Like, I'll probably try and make another bag using whatever yarn I've got left and then see what I make of it. In the meantime, I might use this as a bag just to kind of see how well it wears in. It should wear in similarly to the other bag that I've got. That's of the, like the same the same type of wool. It's just a very nice, nice stretchy, well made market bag. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we got other shit to do. Got to put that to one side over there. <laughs> I like how you test drive your patterns to make sure they work out. Well, I mean, I kind of have to. Like, no one else is going to test this stuff for me, and I kind of don't want to be selling a bag or a pattern unless I, if I don't know if it works. You know, and especially when I make bags like out of a particular material, like I have um, some bags that I've made out of like Burnout Handicrafter cotton and I've been using a bag that's made out of Burnout Handicrafter for about like a, two weeks and I'm not like I'm taking note of like the way that it wears in, which is important for me anyway. It's like I, wa I want it to, to, to wear like the way that I think it like I want it to wear without it pilling excessively, without it getting like dirty. I want to see how the, the color holds up that kind of thing now this this person when they were doing when they were doing this is like they were essentially doing pin grip and they were uh, it was like pin grip I have to think my way through this now because normally if we had this other way we would go under okay which means we have to do similar here. You hook and pull through. And... Oh, this is going to be tricky. I may not be able to get this started like this, but like... Because we're essentially doing this backwards. And this is going to be really easy to lose it now. Okay. All right change of pace. I'm going to get started with this and then I'm going to, to essentially back it and try it left, try it essentially with the with the inverted left-handed method. So let's just get it started and then we'll get back to this. Two, three, four, five, six. If anyone doesn't know this particular style of crochet is uh, English throwing method or English throwing style I should say and if you want to know where that term comes from, it comes from me because nobody else apparently makes an effort to categorize or like learn every possible crochet style. It's just me and whatever bullshit that comes out of my brain. Um, and as soon as someone comes up with a classification screen scheme that isn't just whatever nonsense I come up with, I will absolutely use it, I promise. But for the time being, this is English throwing stuff. Uh, and it's called English throwing style because it's broadly similar to essentially English throwing style knitting. Um, if you, you, you throw like this, if you're, if you're doing uh, in some circumstances when you throw knitting and believe it or not, my mother actually knits like this um, because that's how she was taught. And uh, my grandmother, who told me how to crochet, <laughs> she apparently learned the same method. I don't know. Like... She didn't teach me the regular like knife or pen grip. She taught me this. So as far as I was concerned, like for most, for like until up to a couple of years ago, it was like, this is how you crochet. This is how I thought you crochet. And I didn't know, realize it. I had no idea that there were other styles. It just wasn't like on my radar at all. I was like, if someone says, oh, hey, how do you crochet? I would have picked them up and show them this and they would probably thought it was very strange. All right, let's do this. Okay, I'm going to do the rotation in and then start it and see how we get in. 
two, three, four, five, six. Did I split the yarn? I did. I swear. I've been so nice saying like all these nice things about this yarn. It's like, oh, it doesn't split much. Lies. All right, let's do this. Quickly, quickly. Because we're trying to do insane stuff here and you're going to just have to have a base or something to do the same. Now, in fairness, like the person that I saw actually doing this method, they were just doing like doubles as well. They weren't doing anything really complicated. Like they weren't making lace or any kind of stuff like that. They were just working a line of doubles. But they were legitimately working upside down. Like it was literally right-handed crochet rotated 180 degrees and inverted so that it could be done with the left hand. And like she she literally just turned it around and like, as far as I know, it was pen grip, like this. Let's see if we can figure this out. Let's, let's see, let's see. Like, so we would normally go like this, and we're not doing it in this case. We have to go in, we have to go in and grab. And nope, that doesn't work. Because it's in the back here. And I'm trying to essentially do this mirroring. So if this turns out to be kind of boring, I'm really sorry, guys. This is just like, I'm trying some silly shit. Like, uh, okay. So in, pull through. That's a chain. In, pull through. See, the hook is backwards now and it just feels very odd. In, pull through. Without splitting yieldy yarn shit. Okay. All right, so we've got chains. We've got the chains. So, in, under, grab. No, nope, that doesn't work. Because we're going to, like, we have to kind of, like, like this, because that's normally how we wrap it. And then we go in, in the back here, we've got one on the hook. No, because we're, we're, yeah, okay, so, oh, in like this, in through the, the we're not going through the back, we're going through the, the essentially the front here. Grab it and pull it around, and that's like this. Then in and pull through in and pull through and that is a backwards double crochet Whew. there's a lot of thinking here just not even gonna lie there's a lot of thinking going on here so in and back grab that pull it out like there So that and that and pull through. Yeah. Oh, jeez. This. Because if you're going in the, the back like this, it's kind of like. No, I couldn't have done an extra one there. Okay, okay. Back the bus up. We can do this. We can do this! Ah! <sighs> okay. Pick it. Through. Grab it. Back. And that is the usual wrap over shape. Then in. Pull through. In and pull through. And we're essentially working with the hook away from us and that, by the way, is fucking complex. That is like, you need to work entirely backwards um, and just rotate the hook as if it's backwards and keep the yarn coming out the front here. Christ on a bike, that is tricky. One, two, three. Yeah. Because you're going like you're going like this, and then in here, and then wrapping and grabbing, and then you have to remember to wrap this way, working with the hook away from you, 
and then pull through. Like, is that even... Yeah, no, that's accurate. That's a, that's a double crochet. Jesus. Oh. Okay. Wrap in, grab, pull down, wrap, and through, wrap, pull through. Open in, back, grab, pull through, like that. Wrap, wrap. Christ. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just not doing that anymore. Oh my God. That is unbelievably tricky. I mean, possible. Yes. But fucking hell, that is complicated. That's like, like trying to mirror everything, reversing it. Oh God. That's, that's tricky as all get out. That's like, yeah, I'm just going to go back to doing regular right handed. Christ. I found my yarn after months, so no sign of my hook. <laughs> the yarn is in the drawer next to my couch. Hopefully I remember telling people. Okay, just yes. Just, I, you know, if I see you again, I'll ask you, did you find your hook? You know? Failing anything else, if you really want, I can send you some fucking hooks, because I have millions of them. Like, I acquire hooks at a great pace. Um, yeah, so it, it's like, I need to actually buy more hooks, believe it or not. I need to buy hooks in bulk, because <laughs> I want to do these uh, these crochet workshops. And, like, I can't really do them unless I have hooks and yarn. The yarn's not the, like, isn't really the, the difficult thing. But the hooks are a bit of a bollocks because, like, like, they don't sell packs of size 4 hooks, you know? If you wanted to get, say, 20 size 4 hooks, you end up having to order them online. It's not like you could walk into Michael's and buy them. Not a thing. <laughs> they assume you want, like, you know, five sizes of hooks or something like that. Like, the, yeah, no, sorry. I hope the hook's somewhere safe. Apparently where I can I can't get it is the safest place. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so believe it or not, I'm constantly losing my hooks. It's not a big as big a deal because I have so many, but I will literally stick them with a particular project and then just forget about the that I put them in there. And these these days I'm just taking to not putting my hooks with the project at all and just kinda like oh, I'll just accept that I won't quite remember the size I used if I go back to this. If it's something important, I remember the size. Do I write this shit down? Hell no. I don't run that way. Even though I constantly tell people, get a notebook, write your shit down. It's just, no, it's like I, I fly by the seat of my pants, apparently, and I occasionally just have no idea what hook I use. Yay. Good job, me. Yeah, I wonder what I do a five by five. I just do a slightly smaller bag and just, you know, fuck it, whatever. Less yarn or something. Take pictures. Yeah, I know, right? Snow Peep sent me some of hers. Definitely apartment somewhere. Oh, yeah, there you go. Like, honestly, you can walk into a thrift store and buy a bunch of hooks for nothing, which is how I got literally all of my hooks. And I have packs upon packs upon packs of hooks. I would just, like, go in and spend, like, $40 and just buy, like, a bunch of hooks, you know? And they always sell those teeny tiny little ones that I never use. But like, I always want the bigger ones. And if I can get a bunch of like size four, size fives, that's a good kind of like crocheting size, I guess. Take pictures, right? That would also be sensible. Am I going to do that? Probably not. That would be effort. And I'm not really about the effort. I probably should be, who am I kidding? But look, I, you know, the, like, this this whole week has been, has been a thing. And, you know, I'm giving myself permission to essentially half-ass a whole bunch of stuff. You know, like making four bags in a very short space of time. I made two alone on Canada Day because, like, because why not? You know, that's how we were rolling. I'm just like, you know, hey, it's Canada Day. I have this soft fuzzy yarn. I'm going to make bags out of it instead of something sensible like a scarf or whatever, you know. That would be too easy. No, I have to make bags out of everything, even stuff that makes really no sense. Wait until I make a bag out of mohair and then everyone will curse my name, including me. And in fairness, I do have some really nice mohair. I'm just like, am I going to use it for something or am I just going to keep it and stare at it and occasionally take it out and squish it? I don't know, you know. Yarn is difficult and I find it hard to get rid of my stash. Like, some things I'm just looking at it going like, oh, I can't use that. It's too nice. Like, <laughs> what else am I going to use it for? No, make bags. Make all the bags. Make an excess of bags, of course. And I'm sure somebody would like a mohair bag. Honestly, look, 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 look. Let's, let's be clear here, okay? If Connie Jenner 
can rock out there. All right, just essentially walk out in public like a totally normal person carrying around a bag made out of glass, which is the most impractical shit I've ever seen in my life. I could probably make a mohair bag and somebody would like it. Maybe someone will pay thousands of dollars for one, no matter how impractical it is. You know, I can take comfort in the knowledge that it is at least more practical than a bag that is see-through made out of fucking glass. Just, still salty about that, I'm just saying. Just saying. A little bit salty. I have this like need for the things that I make to be somewhat practical and when things are just purely decorative it's like well I stare at it and go like well what was the entire point of that and I know I shouldn't have to you know things can just be decorative and all that but like I'm just I need things to actually just yeah, you know, bag no seriously it is a bag it is made out of motherfucking glass like it is blown glass okay blown glass See-through, balloon glass. Like, it is exactly as impractical as it sounds. Not even lying. Like, she was out there carrying around blown glass bag. All right? It's literally just like, it's just this, this bag, okay? With like this part here and it curves up and it's got two glass handles and two little kind of glass horns. Look, just, it makes no fucking sense. Like, just, why? Why are you even? And for that, by the way, you could pay like $3,000 for something that looks like it should have flowers in it and belong on a sideboard. Like, just, no. Ah. Matthew, I'm really decorative. I, you know, you know, I believe it. I believe it. I'm, I'm sure you have other purposes as well, apart from being purely decorative. Surely that's considered a weapon. Look, I'm just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think probably about, about 90% of the bags and shoes worn by by the Kardashians can probably be considered lethal weapons because they're all kind of big and expensive. But look, I just, I, 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 I kind of don't want to judge someone for their choice of bag, but I will in this case because I make bags and because I look at this and go, what the, what is the point of this bullshit? Like, like, like you could go out and God knows she's got the money. You could go out and spend twenty thousand dollars on an Hermes handbag okay all right an Hermes bag okay and and there is a serious questions raised as to whether it's even worth that kind of money however you can be guaranteed that if you have a, an Hermes handbag okay that you spend 20 grand on that it will be a beautiful functional piece of equipment all right because Hermes does not screw around when it comes to actually making handbags that are usable. You are paying $20,000 for perfection. And if it was not usable as a handbag, it would not be perfect. Okay? Seriously. There you go. If you whack someone with a glass bag, you'd mess them up for sure. You absolutely would. Three, yeah, 3550 Canadian for that glass bag. Motherfuckers. Wow. That's a lot of money. A lot of money for a bag that you probably can't comfortably carry because it's too heavy. Just what? I, I I question. I question all of it. Yep. But 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 look like just like haute, haute couture is its own weird little bunch of nothing. And I question a lot of the stuff there as being just like being just fucking weird and like and I can understand like clothes as art or clothes as like experimentation, you know? It just really bugs me that and you see like obviously rich women who are just essentially carrying around a bag that is very clearly a status symbol and it's not practical at all. Like it is it is there simply as a flex to say I'm so rich and and it's my life is so easy that I can carry around a black I can essentially be out in public for five seconds with a glass bag safe in the knowledge that I don't have to walk anywhere I have someone who will take care of this expensive glass bag for me I have a car that will bring me wherever I want to do like I'm not gonna be walking around town with that stuff my my hand is never going to get tired carrying it for example and you know I don't even need to put stuff in it because you can really put nothing in a fucking glass handbag like like, could, you, could, you, could you just, just think about this. Think about this for two seconds. Can you put your fucking tampons in a glass bag? A see-through glass bag. Can you do that? No, I don't think so. Fucking no one can do that. Not even, not even Kylie Jenner, whatever her name is. Like, I have stuff in my bag that I do not want to display to the world. And a glass handbag kind of defeats the purpose of all that. But the thing is, is that she can literally just carry it around just for fun. You know, 
just just as is like look at me and how much money I've got and like it's it's just uh, uh, so much about it irritates the shit out of me like yeah just uh, I, I I am I am should just make a t-shirt saying I'm poor and salty or something <laughs> that would be kind of an accurate description you know poor but salty and the other side of the t-shirt was just going to say eat the rich with no further context although I'm sure people can guess at the context one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. counting with cipher lead has returned don't worry it will not last too long all of the bags that I make are current like a, these these of this pattern anyway they're essentially made on a, on a grid of squares and there's a number of like there's 13 squares in the actual pattern itself and the size of the bag is determined by the size of the square so the bag that I just made was a six by six square like on the six, six by six grid and this one's going to be a five by five grid slightly smaller slightly less yarn used which means that I'll make a sm slightly smaller bag but I'll use all my yarn and I'm not going to run out a YouTuber I like had an embarrassing bag moment with his wife. She had anti-diarrhea medicine half out of her bag sitting on the table at a restaurant and neither of them realised until they were getting ready to leave. <laughs> I, you know, you know, that's going to be a funny story in a couple of years. It'll be fine. I'm looking at photos of the last bag and I don't understand how you put things in or take things out. You do not. You do not put things in or take things out. It's purely for looking at, which is why it offends me. And worse, the way to recognize them, so we probably saw, oh no. Well, look, you know, those are the kind of funny stories that you will tell in 10 years and you'll laugh about it, you know? It's, it's not great now, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. Like, your friends may not let you forget, mind you, you know? But it's, it's all right. That, that last bag, though, I was trying I was trying to work out how she would actually keep a phone in it, all right? Because, like, I would think that's the most basic kind of requirement of a handbag even if you are going out to be seen can you fit your fucking form phone in it like phone and wallet or maybe phone and lipstick if someone else is paying for your stuff i don't know i don't know one two three four five six uh, yeah look just 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 don't okay you know I guess it's counting, yeah, okay, you know what, yeah, it's counting with side for life, go, go, yeah, I, I, I guess so. We're not counting up to 12, by the way, we're going to count to 10. Photo on web page showing that iPhone doesn't quite fit. Uh, right, right, <laughs> like, I hope I'm just not the only person who is just personally offended that this thing exists, like, looks like all she has is lipstick in it, like, what the fuck else can you put in it? It's a vase you carry, like... Don't get me wrong, we've all thought about it. That doesn't make it an actual real thing that you could do and not be laughed at. Everyone was going gaga over it for some reason. Like, and the thing is, all right, is that apparently it's a collaboration between like some famous glass maker and this other people who make like expensive handbags. And I was looking at their handbags thinking, this is some of the most boring shit I've seen in my life. Like, I do not understand why these are popular or why these are expensive. This looks like something that you could walk into TJ Maxx and buy any day of the week. I'm baffled sometimes by designer culture, designer kind of... Wait a minute, why did I do that? What the... That's not right. Okay. Okay, yeah, right, that's... that's So, so apparently I'm, I'm getting so ticked off about glass handbags that I'm just, you know... We're doing this now. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. Anyway, yeah. Designer handbags. True story. A lot of them are a total waste of time. And I mean, everyone can rag on coach. God knows I do because their quality has gone to absolute fucking hell in the last like 10 years or so, okay? But at least if you spend several hundred dollars on a coach bag, you were going to get something that can be used as a handbag. Is that one, two, three? No, that's the wrong number. Again, the lipstick barely fits on the close up. You can see the edges. I know, right? Oh, God. Like, I just, I'm so confused by that bag. It's like, 
like and part of part of the thing about and generally celebrity culture as well is the kind of thing that kind of gets right up my nose right is that it's not just like it isn't just like um it's not just like showing off how much money they've got it's like they're essentially like selling this ideal this lifestyle whatever you want to call it you know to to people who don't have the money for it and don't have the you know and essentially they they're selling this 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 illusion of success and fame and money and, and all this other kind of crap and it is it is very superficial you know and it it begs the question about how superficial is their life and and I mean, I could definitely opine on the actual kind of celebrity culture or celebrity cult kind of stuff that like it, it's just it's an absolute thing that happens and it's weird, definitely. And the, the like it was a thing long before Instagram influencers were a thing, if you know what I mean. Like it would be like, say, for example, um, Grace Kelly with her maze again or whatever like that. They made the Kelly handbag for her. You know, and everybody, of course, everybody wanted like a Kelly handbag because Grace Kelly was carrying that thing around, you know. And yeah, so, but it's like the, the Kardashians have kind of gone to the er example of this because they were really kind of at the forefront of influencer culture. And and Kylie Jenner is like the worst of them. I don't like Kim Kardashian, definitely to a point. Um, but I will at least give her props for being like incredibly savvy when it comes to marketing, if nothing else. Kylie Jenner is just like, I wonder sometimes about what her life is like. I honestly do. Like they've essentially sold every expectation they might have of actual privacy for the sake of money and fame. And like that is rather sad when you think about it, you know, I don't know what exactly that does to a person. I can't imagine psychological effects of it can be any good, but like, I, I'm sure that I'm sure that like it, she, maybe she's I don't know I hope she's got a therapist because it makes me wonder if she's been under a fucking microscope her whole life to let me go from this like I cannot imagine for example Kylie Jenner sitting down and doing knitting in her spare time like could you imagine that I basically can't um I, I, I have no idea what she even does in spare time does she have hobbies I have no idea like I don't know if she is allowed to have hobbies. Are you allowed to have hobbies if you're an Instagram influencer? I don't know. Did you see the cucumber thing? Oh God. Oh God, do I want to know what the cucumber thing is? Oh Christ. Okay, KK, lay it on me. What's the cucumber thing? Am I going to regret this? Is it, fa okay. I was going to say, is it family friendly? <laughs> Who fucking cares? There's a clip where Kendall Jenner tries to cut a cucumber. I'm so going to regret looking at this. I'm going to look at it. I'm so, I'm so going to look at it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where are we? Kendall Jenner Cucumber. Kendall Jenner confuses fans with how she cuts a cucumber. Hold on. She has had so much work done. What? Oh God, I...
my gosh. Why do you guys really watch this stuff? Oh my god. Okay. I... I... I have many questions and I don't want any of them answered. I just... I... I mean, I understand that she's super rich, all right, but this is, I've just watched what looks to be a grown adult attempting to cut something with a knife, and it looks like she's never held a knife before, and, and that is worrying on a level I cannot fucking describe. I, 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 I I'm doing this, I'm like, Is it? Is that just? Is that just me? Just kind of going like, just staring at us, going. Like... I think the thing that worries me the most, okay, is that, as far as I know, she's at least Gen. Z, she's a millennial, at least Gen Z. She's gonna be, you know, you know, younger millennial, right? Kendall Jenner, anyway. She's not old or anything. You know, she's like mid-twenties or some shit. And presumably she's grown up with complete acceptance of technology and especially search engines. And her first instinct is not just to Google that stuff because how to cut a cucumber is certainly something I'm sure you could find on the YouTubes if you really wanted to. I I question that it wasn't her first instinct to just look it up before, for example, filming this. Is that weird? Like, if I don't know how to do something, if I don't know how to do something, I generally Google it. And I'm old. I am an old. I am so confused watching an adult not be able to cut something and not thinking to just look it up or just... Yeah, that's... Her mother wasn't doing anything. I'm just like, her mother's just saying, oh, get the chef, get the chef. I'm just... Lady, take your knife away from your relative. I don't actually know if it's your daughter. I don't know offhand. Look, I don't know anything. Um, or have the chef of your mom show. Yes, yes. Just have the the chef or your mom show you. I just I. Yeah, I just I'm confused. I'm. <laughs> How do you mother you not get off the couch and cut your child? I know, right? I don't understand why it is that she's like she has all of this stuff, I guess, and and she just decides to make a salad. She's gonna make herself a snack and chopped cucumber. Who the fuck eats raw cucumber as a snack? Is that like a rich people thing? I don't know what about because that sounds fucking tasteless. I mean, is this like a rich people thing? Is that that of which of which I know nothing because I'm. Like, like I am poor I I have so many questions I swear I'm never going to watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians because I would literally I would watch it okay and I would be like how do you people put your pants on in the morning and not get confused like I I would I would question so much I would just I would question so much maybe because she's a model and can't eat normal food oh Okay. Oh, so when she was making like all those weird faces and stuff, that was actually her doing the model thing. Oh, okay, okay, that kind of makes more sense. But it still kind of begs the question: like, she's a model and she doesn't know how to cut her own salad. Like, what does she do if there's nobody there who to make it for her? I don't understand. I love cucumber with Maldon salt. I mean, I guess. I I personally am a huge fan of seasoning salt. I would eat that shit on anything. You know? You give me, like, avocado and seasoning salt and it's the greatest thing in the world. I would literally, like, give me, give me avocado, like, half an avocado and throw some seasoning salt in that shit and I will eat that with a spoon. You don't even need to, like, you don't need to do anything. Just give me the, give me the avocado. 
I assume there's always someone there. I mean, I, I guess so. Just it's creepy or... I... What would happen if she was not like... This is why it's like... It's like people are like children. They always have to have adult supervision. It's worrying when you think about it. Wow. And cucumber makes an excellent carrier for dips like hummus. This is true. You're like, I would, I would definitely question if someone was eating cucumber on their own. I would not question if they were eating it with other things. Like, absolutely. Cucumber is like, and it's a good like thing that has almost no flavor that you can use to deliver flavor in other forms uh, with, with hummus. Yeah. It's a mind reeling video. It is a video that I'm just like, I can't believe I watched that. That's, yeah, that's like, it's so bad that it makes me think it was intentional. That like that, that that that's part of the part of the gimmick, I guess. Like the if that makes sense. Like I've heard like because I mean for what's for what's worth, I'm pretty sure that what's her name, um, shit. What's the name of is Chris? Is it Chris Jenner? Is that the mother? I can't remember. I think that like she's very very like you know marketing savvy. And part of the reason the Kardashians are famous at all is because like she like made it so or some crap like that like um because they're famous just for being famous right but i got it's got to be part of the gimmick it's like hand hand the, the the model who doesn't know how to do anything for herself a knife and tell her to to cut a cucumber and see what happens and don't stop her because like, this is a tv show cameras are rolling and she could have very easily cut herself on that if it hadn't been intentional and like Damn, you know, it's got to be part of the gimmick. It was the same thing with the uh, oh god, what's her name? Uh, d uh, Kim Kardashian's like shapewear line. She ended up calling a kimono, and there was an absolute out uproar from obviously a lot of you know Japanese people for whom the kimono is a cultural icon, you know, and not a piece of fucking underwear. And, you know, she let it go on for like a day or so after she filed the trademarks or whatever like that and then changed the name. Um, but I can just imagine all the free publicity that she got out of that, you know, just from the outrage when you think about it. Again, famous just for being famous. Like, I get the feeling that at least some people in the family are just literally marketing geniuses. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's like they've, you know, they have the... The, the, the thing about going viral and it's yeah okay the Kardashians yeah that's a whole last thing I mean Kylie Jenner particularly she's like young and she looks like she's in her 40s because of all that plastic surgery like makes me wonder about her makes me wonder about the whole family so this is a fairly strange conversation to be having at 20 past 10 and then, well 20 past 10 on a Sunday night we're talking about celebrities and crocheting a bag and listening to me bitch about designer culture such as it is oh come on just fucking work with me yeah all right like i don't know you know it's just it's a weird you know it's a weird thing celebrities are weird celebrities are very it's like we just suddenly decide that other people's lives are so so very interesting that we want to to find out everything about them and and follow them and see all their drama and everything like that and it creates a certain kind of onus on the people being observed to actually create drama simply to be entertaining as opposed to being actually and, and ultimately the result is that they are not truly honest about what their life is really like thus kind of defeating the purpose of actually getting to know them as people and you know, absorbing all this information about the, about their, their you know, the, about, you know, making that kind of personal connection that I think a lot of people seem to want from celebrities. Ultimately, the very act of observation causes it to be entirely fake. Thus, again, proving whatever that law is about ever about, like, observing something changes the thing that's being observed or some crap. And I can't remember what it is. Is this Schrodinger? I don't know. Anyway, you get what I mean. The Kardashians couldn't crochet this bag. No, they could pay someone to crochet this bag, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I don't think Kylie Jenner is actually a billionaire, but I think her, her the family is to some extent. I mean, none of them are real. They're all entirely plastic and fake. And I wonder how that affects their mental health or what's going to happen to them in like, you know, 34 years or whatever. It just, what happens to them when they can't maintain their plastic surgery anymore? Or when like, 
when the fame runs out, are they going to just retire quietly or are they going to be addicted to the fame at that point? You just, you know, interesting questions, you know. Like, what do you do if you've had their level of fame and fortune and you, you know, and that's all you've ever known and then suddenly you don't have it anymore? Or well, you've got the money, but nobody knows who you are. Like, how would someone adapt to that? I don't know. I wonder is it a similar thing to someone who'd been like an unknown all their life and suddenly they hit, you know, they just jump into fame. Probably like it's well known, but if you just suddenly fall into money or you win the lot or whatever, that people tend to go completely off the rails. So it makes me think, makes me wonder. I buggered up that stitch. Let's try that again. Yep. I don't know if I would ever actually want to be famous. I think it would be a strange experience. Because I'm sure that I would be famous up until the point where I completely piss people off. And at that point, everyone would cancel me and that would be the end of it. And, you know, I'd be okay with it. Because I don't think that cancelling, cancel culture is really a thing. I think nobody's entitled to the attention of other people. And the whole idea of, like, cancelling someone because of something they're said or is, is like, oh, you're just going to, like, not listen to their music or all buy their art. Well, okay then. It's just... You do you, boo. You're not obliged to listen to anybody. You're not obliged to buy anything. And if that means that someone loses sales and everything as a result, well, maybe you shouldn't have been a dick. I don't know, you know. I try not to think about it too much. Well, in a lot of the procedures, they don't know what you will look like when you age, so that's what that's going to do when one day you look crazy. I mean, in fairness, I think I think Kylie Jenner already looks kind of crazy. Um... I see a lot of pictures of her on Instagram re versus reality on the subreddit. You know, it's like sh her face looks good in one photograph angle and that's kind of it. Could be worse could end up on Fox News like Caitlyn. Oh, dear God. Yeah, Caitlyn Jenner ended up on Fox News. That was just like, holy shit. Like, you know, small mercies there, but for the grace of God go we, you know. Oh god, Ch Chaska Joe is raiding with a party of seven. I've got a raid. Oh, thank you so, thank you so much. Chazercising into your stream. <laughs> Chazercising, I love that. <laughs> the Chazercising. <laughs> hello, 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 people. How are you, how are you doing? Um, thank you, thank, thank you so much for the raid. I, I, I do appreciate it. We're um, we are um talk. Oh, hey, River, how's it going? <laughs> We're, we're talking about the Kardashians or should I say bitching about the Kardashians or complaining about celebrities, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Thanks River. How's it going? <laughs> you are in for a ride. <laughs> yes. Hello. How's it going? I, thank you. This, um, this particular yarn is this stuff. It is your basic red heart super saver. I've got two skeins of it to get through. I've been making bags. Well, one bag so far. This is the second bag I'm making. Out of it. <laughs> Hi. I hope you, oh yeah, it's just, there you go. Thank you so much, River. I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had a good stream. Um, hope you uh, just, uh, hope, it was, hope it was fun, like happy Sunday, et cetera, et cetera. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, I'm always on around this time. I'm always on from about nine o'clock PST up to about 11 o'clock. So I'm here for about another half hour, about-ish. <laughs> Maybe later, who knows? Yeah, uh, if you don't know me, um, I'm I'm sorry for life. I spend a lot of time crocheting and swearing. Mostly the crochet, though. I I, I try. You know, I um, yeah. Um, and we talk a lot of we talk a lot of nonsense. Like not even gonna lie, we talk a lot of nonsense. <laughs> uh, we're we're currently talking about or complaining about the Kardashians. Um, I don't know how we got onto the conversation. I think so, just someone mentioned about Kendall Jenner trying to cut a cut a cucumber, and I had to go and watch that video, which was. Which was nuts. Uh, oh yes, I'm drinking bubbly. Um, yes, I, I drink bubbly in every stream. This is the cherry one. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I don't know if you've seen the video of Kendall Jenner trying to cut a cucumber, but it's the most awkward thing I've seen in at least a week. And I can't believe that a grown adult did not just literally just picking up the knife trying to cut slices off a cucumber and I was scared she was going to cut herself because it was that awkward it's just it it no it was yeah it was just I 
I was just watching it and going like, mm, what? Just rich people are so very weird. Okay, rich people are exceptionally weird, and and scary, and just like, and I can't believe that like, they literally put her on camera and and let her pick up a knife when she clearly does not know how to use a knife without hurting themselves. Oh yeah, and the, the, the impractical glass handbags. Oh God. oh God. Oh God, oh God, Yeah, River, don't worry. Go on, just go off to bed. Don't worry. I'm just going to be here talking bullshit like I normally do. Go. I'll catch you online or something. Yeah, so yeah, I was bitching about handbags. Okay. Because I, I love to make bags. I make a lot of bags. And I am offended by shit like that glass handbag that I think it was Kylie Jenner was carrying around the place because like it was just the most impractical heap of shit you've ever seen in your life. It's literally... Like, it's shaped like this, okay? Like a round oval, you know, oval. It's got two little horns at the top, made out of glass. The whole thing's made out of blown glass, all right? And the, 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 the thicker bit of the bottom is, is the actual bag itself. The thinner bit at the top is the handle. And it's made out of fucking glass. 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 Just... I'm off to bed. Oh, God. Yeah, just... Yeah, just... Thank you, thank you so much for the raid. What are you doing hanging out in my stream? Just go... Go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I, I will sit here and continue to complain about the Kardashians. Who, who am I kidding? What am I doing now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, okay, right. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, just just interesting conversation. There's nothing like I routinely talk about the most oh the the most obscure shit. Just trust me. Like, I I'm literally just essentially throwing out psycho like random psychoanalysis of fucking Kim, Kim Car Kendall Kardashian or something. I don't, I don't know. It's fine. Go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it. Good night. <laughs> Streaming for 12 hours. I can barely manage two and I feel bad. I'm not even kidding. Like I got to try and stream more like longer and more consistently. Like, I haven't been doing the writing stream on Fridays because I've been busy with my parents being here and it's just like, it wasn't really possible to stream during the day. Like, Sunday nights was different, you know, I was streaming, we got my mom and Wild Nomad here and just like, you know, hanging out and talking crap. And that was, that was okay. But like, during the day in, on Fridays, like when I normally do the writing stream, no, nah, it was never going to happen. It's just not. Like, my parents are here, I can't just take two hours away and do some writing because like, they come all the way from Ireland, literal other side of the world, just to see me, you know? I can't just, yeah, I gotta go and, like, spend time with them and stuff. And in fairness, we didn't actually do a whole lot of, like, touristy stuff, because they've been here so often that we've done all that already. What we did was that we went shopping, and that meant that we kind of went out to all the thrift stores. It was great. Oh, how did they like Canada? Oh, they like, they love coming to Canada. Um, they, they, they really enjoy the fact that I live close to Vancouver Airport, and they get a nice, easy, ice quick drive. Oh, and I want to go back to Matthew Post's claim that he's purely decorative. He's, in, he's indeed decorative, but also very good at reaching things on high shelves. I told you so. Yeah, has other purposes. Important thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, my parents really like Canada. Um, they're, they, they have the similar issue that I do in that you can't get a decent Irish breakfast in this city for love nor money, but that's not, you know, unusual. It's just more annoying than anything else. And my dad does not drink Guinness outside of Ireland, so it's not really a concern. He just sticks to beer. What can you do? It would be nice, I suppose, if you could get a decent pint of Guinness in, in Vancouver, but apparently such things are not possible here either. So that's 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 going to be the way it is. It's fine. But, you know, there was really nice. We had great weather while we were here. Like, we got almost no rain. The rain kind of hung on till they were gone, which was good. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. Now we're going to do start the, the thing. Halifax. What's Halifax got to do with it? Was there rain in Halifax? Do you or your father follow the shit London, London Guinness Instagram? What is the shit London in London Guinness Instagram? I, I do follow an Instagram account, which is literally just pictures of Irish people abroad being served pints of Guinness that would make your heart, like that would break your heart because they're so terrible. OK, but I'm. You, that may be something different. What is the shit London Guinness Instagram? I'm almost scared to ask. I heard Jamie Dornan. Oh yeah, because he is Irish, isn't he? Talk about it once. Uh, now, does this mean that the, the 
Where do you have to go for a decent Guinness in Canada? You do not go anywhere for a decent Guinness in Canada. Such things do not exist. You have to go to Ireland for a decent Guinness. According to my father, anyway. And frankly, he's been drinking Guinness all of his life, and he'd know. Uh, yeah. Long story short, Guinness does not travel very well. So if you actually want to get a decent pint, you have to go to Dublin. Um, to the actual brewery in Dublin, you know. No, not even Halifax. I'm not saying, like, seriously, seriously, not the same thing. you got to actually go to the Guinness Brewery in Dublin. You have to go to the source. Guinness does not travel at all. <laughs> it's the same reason if you're going to go uh, to get a decent pint of Murphy's, you don't go to Dublin. you got to go to Cork because it's brewed in Cork. Trust me on this, all right? Yeah. And i got to go to... And then, so here's the question about the, the, the shit London Guinness Instagram. Is it shit Guinness or... Is it just the Instagram account that, or is it just, or are they referring to, now I'm curious. Links should be allowed? I don't know. Um, I don't know, try it. I, you see, if River was here, I would ask. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, there we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Shit, London. <laughs> Documenting all of the shite pints of Guinness in London for my sins. Oh, dear gods. <laughs> poor guy look at that I just feel so bad oh these are awful oh I feel so bad for him now oh that's terrible just they look so bad oh no oh no I feel so bad. Oh, River, don't worry. I was just, I, we were trying, I, I was just thinking, like, someone asked, like, are links allowed? And I was like, oh, maybe. River. <laughs> like, River would know. I I don't. Um, Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Go to bed or something. It's fine. <laughs> Apparently, Links Ireland. People seem upset. Yes, they're upset. Those terrible pints of Guinness. I feel really bad. Oh, God. <laughs> Encoding overloaded, consider doing blah, blah, blah. I have no idea what that means. OBS is telling me something about the encoding. If the video starts to stutter, please let me know. I It's doing a thing that I don't understand and I'm not inclined to learn, so I may have to ask Crater Rain about it later. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, seriously, that 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 account, oh, that's oh that's that's so sad. Those are, those are some really awful points. I... I kind of like okay so okay so back in the back in ye old times the ye oldie times okay when I was a bartender all right uh <laughs> the Guinness reps if I remember correctly actually had people who would go out to pubs and would teach the people how to pull a decent pint of Guinness okay not in Ireland mind you because we're born practically with the cultural knowledge of how to pull a decent pint and I certainly did as soon as I walked into a pub. But like, it's literally something that you get taught. You know, you know this. Like, but if they go to other countries, obviously, because it's not the same over there. And, and like, you would have these guys whose sole job is to go to pubs and teach the bartenders how to pull a decent pint. <laughs> and, and apparently they're not doing that anymore because some of those is terrible. Oh, dear God. He talked about it in reference to a photo of Christopher Walken and Emily Blunt trying to pour a glass of Guinness. Oh my god. Oh, just don't. Oh no. Like, you would have to know the technique of pulling a pint. Like, it's not, it's not that easy. Oh god. And yeah. And you, like, the, the aim of a decent pint is that you have to pull it and get a proper head on the pint itself. Like if you're if you're looking at the glass, you know the, the it actually should first of all it needs to be an actual fucking Guinness glass, not some plastic cup, all right? Like the the actual Guinness glass, and then like and there has to be a certain amount of head in it, and you have to be gentle with it, so that you get the right amount of head in it, and not and not so much like if you if there's like two inches of foam at the top, you've done it wrong, and it's going to taste bad. Oh God. He just claimed he was not present. Oh God, yeah, right. Like, I know, I know a couple of guys or whatever who have gone to, you know, my dad included. Like, would have gone to the states, you know, because it's a big thing, you know. Obviously in Ireland, you know, you go to the states and you do for the summer and work and you know, 
life experiences and all that kind of thing because you know Irish people like to travel and they would you know go looking for a pint of Guinness all right and they'd go into a bar and and ask for a pint of Guinness and they'd see the bartender attempting to pull the Guinness and doing it really badly and you'd get literally the guys would be just like okay st- I'm going to stop you right there and they would walk behind the bar and pull the pint and show them how to do it just so that they could have a decent pint in whatever pub they're in in wherever in America like <laughs> oh god it's not something you just let it go if I was, like if I was in a pub and someone pulled a pint and and threw that down in front of like someone I was with or even in front of my dad god god help them or like they they because my dad would throw a shit fit you know and I'd be just like okay excuse me for a second can I come behind there and actually pull a pint for you because because this shit's not on like do you realize that's not a re- that's not a good pint that's a terrible terrible pint that is the pint that will make the strongest Irishman cry tears of heartbreak because like you've just wasted a whole pint of Guinness oh god it's just oh no no yeah I can mean I can understand that like yeah I should be a bartender again you know I feel like with my Irish accent I could just like I could probably get a lot of tips I hope I don't know like do the the the, the thing whatever it's called the safe serve I think it's something you need in BC I can't remember you should just do that and go and just start essentially just go and spread the word of decent pints of Guinness around Vancouver like I'm not sure if you can get a decent pint here anyway but you might as well give it your best shot like Oh, come on, just unravel for me. What do you like? Let's try this. And this is why I should just roll, I should just really just roll up a cake and call it good. And I could see Frank staring at me going like, you knew this was going to happen, didn't you? Look at this. Good times, good times. You should pitch Guinness. You should be the Vancouver pint pool coach. Like I'm sure that a lot of like there's a lot of Irish people here. I'm sure some of them know how to pull a decent pint. It's because Guinness doesn't really travel very well at all. It's like can well can you get a decent pint to begin with? Not a guarantee, unfortunately. If there is some kind of similar stout that's brewed here, then you'll probably be a decent pint. But otherwise, I don't know. Begs the question. I'll tell you what. But that was like that was like my retirement plan for a while. I just thought, you know, I'll do the computer programmer thing for a while, and then I'll make enough money so that I can open a pub. Because I feel that Vancouver is lacking in any decent Irish pubs. They're all just these fake Irish pubs that are just like really depressing. In fairness, when I go into them, because they're not real. They're not real Irish pubs. They've got like just rubbish on the tv that's not even like there's no there's no hurling on the tv they don't have like this the stuff that i'd associate with irish pubs back home up on the walls like they only have like like twee shit and they all serve food like you don't need food in a traditional irish pub you need you need coffee and snacks and that's it coffee tea snacks everything else is irrelevant real irish pubs don't serve food because they're there for drinking it what the fuck is going on with this? I don't even know if it's like a thing in Vancouver that they have to serve food. I can't remember. Oh, come on. Just. Ah! Why are you not working for me? What is wrong with you? Who hurt you? It's definitely not me. I've been gentle with you all night. Come on. Let's just, just get this apart. Come on. Yeah, see, there's, there's that. Wait. What the fuck is going on with this loop? Wait. Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on. All right, all right, all right, all right. Look, look, look. We're making progress. We're making progress. Untangling. Just don't, just don't become a knot because, because I don't want to have to try and undo a fucking knot. Just work with me here. Well, okay then, that's going to be a knot. 
well, I guess, fuck everything. Just, yep. That's a knot. Let's just try and fix it. And it's twisted. Because why not? <sighs> and, and now this is going to be the most boring stream in the world because it's literally just me trying to unravel this nonsense so I can actually get onto the second screen. Come on. Just undo this and don't fuck up. Come on. Like, just... I, see, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing this, except that I fucking... Come on, I'm trying to get on stream. I've got things to do. God damn you. There. Right. Right! Ugh. And the yarn's gotten stuck. No. Stop it. Right. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay. Okay. It's fine. I'm gonna just continue. Things I have to put up with. Even from here that I'm trying to be nice about. God damn it. You don't deserve me, I'm telling you that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I'm not talking to you guys, I'm talking to the Aaron. The Aaron doesn't deserve me. You guys are alright. Okay. Let's get going on this. I want to see if I can get at least one other bag done, because I have... I have delusions of going to the Vancouver flea market next weekend, and I would like to hire a table and sell some of my extra stuff. It's just a matter if I can actually get it set up there or not. I'm not entirely sure yet. We shall see. Like, I have a couple of very large items now that I really want to sell. Uh, I'm going to see what I can get for them. But the least of which is an enormous swung glass vase with Ellie Smith. And that one is very easily worth about two hundred dollars. So I'll have to see what I can what I can actually find for it, because a large vintage vase like that would probably sell online for a good bit more than that. So the only problem is that I don't want to have to ship that motherfucker. I just want to sell it for cash. If I sell it for anything over a hundred, I'm going to be making a fairly tidy profit on it. Which is the important thing. And for the record, some idiot donated to Valley Village with a bunch of fake flowers in it. And Valley Village sold it for me for twelve dollars. And... I probably didn't do any kind of googling to see whether it was actually a vintage item or not, but it totally is. And swung glass vases from the mid 20th century are super fucking popular right now. But I figure if I go to the flea market sell a lot of my bigger stuff, I should definitely, definitely see about selling some of my craft stuff as well. And now that I have a little square reader thingy jobby, I could probably take payments as well. And I'm not sure about the legality of actually doing that at the actual, like at the flea market. I'm just saying, you know, look, I've got I do craft stuff as well. I have a square reader. If you want to do that, you totally can. Because they do say cash only, and people kind of expect cash only when they go in there. I'm just saying it's an option. Someone who really likes the base. I don't know. I show my parents some of your finds, their minds are blown. Like when my grandma died, I might hire you as a consultant so we know what to do with all the crap. I mean, like, is she dead? Or, or like, dies? Oh, okay, okay. Um, I mean, sure, look, you know, I know, I know a lot of stuff, you know. Uh, it's, <laughs> I mean, in fairness, a lot of what I know about is, like, I know a lot about vintage glass and a certain amount about everything else. Um, I, I find that having, like, a broad knowledge base is generally a good idea if you really want to do kind of antiques, kind of evaluations and stuff. Um, funnily enough, I was actually looking at getting into, um, getting my, getting certified as an appraiser. Uh, but I think it's probably more trouble than it's worth. Um, especially because the cost is fairly significant, you know. And, like, I don't know what I would do with it because my my area of expertise is generally quite narrow 
Last I heard she's still alive, but I'm not fond of her, so I'm like, like get rid of anything, I don't care if I even get the money. Well, I mean, <laughs> whatever, man. What, what I mean, what, whatever you want, you know, if you want someone to, to, to go through and evaluate her stuff, sure, I can do that. I, I, that is, that is one of my, that is one of my things. At the very least, I could tell you what you probably should get officially appraised for actual value. She's got a ton of glass figurines, okay. I mean, are they blown glass or are they cut glass or what are they? Because that covers a vast array of kind of possibilities. Like any kind of glass, sure, that is, that is my jam. Like, especially early to mid 20th century glass. Like, um, any kind of, kind of like hand blown, hand blown glass, if it's late 19th century into mid 20th century, that is absolutely my jam. I love it. Like, I, I just, I research that stuff obsessively at this point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, glass figurines can be incredibly lucrative, but it kind of depends on where they're from. I know that the mid-century figurines out of Murano, um, like the other Italian, kind of the Italian glass makers, they tend, like, they were doing a lot of that kind of freeform stuff, you know. I'm not sure to be honest, that's a consulting trust trustee, so I'd rather check with you and either sell or donate it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, there's, there's a big kind of time commitment involved in this kind of stuff. Like, you would generally have to decide whether you want to kind of sell everything as a lot or sell on consignment or just pick out the stuff that's really valuable, sell that, and then just essentially, you know, wash your hands of the rest kind of thing. By and large, that's what happens with estate sales is that like estate people will come in and just like, they'll, they'll buy in bulk and then piece it out and, you know, make the, make their profit that way. It's doable. It's just like, it's because there's so much work involved in actually like getting stuff together and putting it up and getting money for it, you know? Yeah, it's just, there's so much work. The, the, the work is significant. The money's there, but the work is significant. And, and I mean, it's definitely worth it when you have like, a, you buy a large estate lot and something really good is in it, you know? It's just like, when do you, can you find this stuff or not? You know, I don't know. I don't do a lot of estate sales right now because I'm in the unfortunate position of like all the good estate sales are actually out in Vancouver Island in Victoria, you know? It's, it's just a hell of a thing for whatever reason, like all people all retired to Vancouver Island, you know, it's just, it's, it's nuts, you know, and that's where all the really big estate sales happen, you know, and I just, there's no point in me going over there because I can't get over to the island very often. And I certainly can't go for a single estate sale unless I was buying in a big lot and I'm generally not. I, I would go over and look in the Valley Village in Victoria, Salvation Area, and I know a bunch of thrift stores there are definitely worthwhile, but for the rest of it, no, not so much. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. It's going to be a nightmare. Though. My dad will get crap he doesn't want to deal with, and his family is was sketchy. Ooh, okay. All right. Well, look. If you were look, whatever you get, you know, I'll I'll just get in touch with me. I'll help you out. You know, like. Even if you give me a sample of what she's got, at the very least, I'll tell you whether it's worthwhile actually going through it and and figuring out what you want to do with it. Like, there's like there's always the big question of like, is it going to be valuable? Like, is it valuable now, or is it like worth nothing now? But it's expected to get valuable like fifty years, you know, in twenty years time, kind of a thing. And do you want to wait around for it to become more desirable? Like you got to balance like how much time and energy and money is it going to take to store it, that kind of thing. Like, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know. It depends. Like, I know that I, there's there's a lot of feeling that like cut cut crystal is going to come back into into vogue or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I personally don't know if it will. I have a feeling that it might. Like, but I've heard like a bunch of people say now that they think it will, including some like appraisers that I like respect quite a bit but even so it's like well is it really going to come into vogue among like millennials for example because we're the, you know millennials are you know supposed to be the people with money these days and I like everyone has been saying oh you know millennials don't have any money they don't buy decor or whatever like that and I don't think that's fair to say it's more that like millennials are very choosy about what they actually you know decide to include in their life like and I know like 
mid-century modern glass is super popular right now just because millennials are into that kind of thing um and it's partly to do with like the uh it's the how would you call it it's not quite the minimalism but there was like there was i think like mid-century modern was kind of like this this rejection of the 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 elaborate the elaborateness of of like the early 20th century of the victorian era you know it's like it, because if we take every art movement being a rejection of the art movement that comes before us, that was definitely that case anyway. But mid-century modern is just kind of very streamlined. It's, or it's like it's early. It's like early what we call modern, I guess. Um, and it's like the Victorian era was very much about like, or like it was incredibly ornate. It was showing off. It was like you know, you know, displaying like yourself in in the the knickknacks that you kept. That kind of thing. And and because it was the era of automation as well, it was kind of the you know industrial revolution, making like decoration or whatever available to the masses, et cetera, et cetera. But like I think millennials kind of embrace the whole kind of almost minimalism aspect of mid-century modern because and the the fact that everything is very like clean lines more than rather than ornateness and elaboration. They kind of go for more kind of simple things. And it's mostly because like they've got smaller homes, they have simpler lives they don't have the money for big elaborate stuff and they are attracted to mid-century modern stuff as a result especially because vintage items tend to last longer and be more durable than particle board bollocks furniture yeah and if they can get it for cheap or cheaper than high-end furniture these days they will absolutely buy that shit all day every day it's probably mostly crap this is the same one who bought me all these madame alexander dolls that she swore would become valuable and they're worth nothing and i have no emotional attachment to them i have no idea who madame alexander is Dolls is something I refuse to get into and I to this day know almost nothing about them because dolls are fucking creepy. I don't care what anyone says. I know a little bit about like old toys, all right? Very, very little bit. And it's mostly like I know which Barbies are generally considered to be the really expensive ones. Like from the, the original ones from the 1950s, 1960s-ish, whatever. I can't remember. But that's kind of the limit. I don't get into any other kind of creepy dolls kind of... Because they're just... They're really creepy and I don't like them. So, yeah. <laughs> they're creepy dolls that I wasn't allowed to play with. I know. Oh, God, yeah, right. Like, I, I see a lot of, like, decorative dolls in thrift stores and I avoid them. I don't like them. They are cursed. Almost all of them. It's just so very much not my thing and it seems like a lot of people they're just not their thing either like it's there there is and it's not it's not the fact that that like millennials are not into dolls like there's um zan or whatever on on crochet server is very much into dolls but they're into like it's like they're in they're not into dolls that look old-fashioned they're into modern dolls if that makes sense or, or like modern dolls with that, but they can that they can customize or do interesting things with or whatever. I love my cash pass kid. I played with her and I carried her around. I, right. <laughs> I actually have the the teddy bear that I had when I was four because it was bought for me when I was four years old, and I still have him. And I brought him to Canada because I didn't want to part with him. Uh. Like, I didn't bring him to Canada initially. I actually stored him at my parents' place for a while. But, like, the last time I was home, I decided that it was time to bring him. You know? Actually, I'll be back in a sec. Time to show you guys a vintage item. Hold on. Oopsie daisy. Oh, yeah. I am knocking over everything. Good job, me. All right. This is snowy. You see the size of the bear in relation to me even now? This thing, he was the size of me when I was a four-year-old, okay? And he's he's very soft and fluffy. He's been laundered and he used to have a, a jacket or something. He used to have a uh, like a jumper. He doesn't have one anymore. And his his head's a bit wobbly. But yeah, he's in pretty good condition considering the fact that at least once I gave him a haircut and I chopped a whole bunch of his fur off. 
Why? I cannot remember. I think I was six or seven. I don't really know. But he's survived remarkably well. And I used to use him as a pillow because he was that big. I would literally sleep with my head here on his tummy. And I could probably still do that now, you know. But he's he's okay. He's actually pretty good. You can see the, the neck is a bit... He's got a few runs here where the fabric is gone. Did, did my kids ever play with Snowy? No, they are not allowed. They have their own stuffies. Snowy is, is mine. And he sits... You can't actually see it. There's a shelf up here that he sits on. And that is that is where he stays. Like I don't even keep him in my bed because I don't want him to be damaged any further than he already is. Like he is almost forty years old, which is kind of old for a bear. Um, he's even got his original tag and everything still on it, which is almost faded to nothing. You can just about see the brand name is something called Fairview, and it's got a duck in it. I have no idea. It's just. He's old, okay? He's from the 80s in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, but no, he's just, he's, he's, he's my bear. He's like the only toy that I kept from when I was a kid, you know? And he was the most precious one. My parents never got rid of him. And I kept him all through, like, secondary school. Kept him all through, like, you know, when I was in college and everything. Like, Snowy was my bear. And I just never got rid of him. So now I still have him. And he's going to go back up on the shelf later on. He still sits up on his own, which is nice, you know? And like, that's, that's kind of like the crazy thing about it. He still sits up on his own. I'm just like, it's nuts. <laughs> Considering how old he is, I'm kind of impressed. He's not, he's in reasonably good nick. I might see if I can get a replacement bear, but it's probably going to be impossible to find one of the same kind. He's so old and he's from another country. So yeah. Just bought a stuffy that looks like character from my favorite childhood TV show and Zaboos is proudly on my desk at work. Yeah. Like, he, he, I love, I love the, the, the names. I love the names that we give our toys, you know? Because, like, I'm pretty sure his name isn't officially Snowy. He's just like, that's what I called him when I was four and it stuck. You know? That's what you do when you have toys that you really like. And I don't even know if my if my brothers and sisters my, if my brother and my sister uh, like ha if they have any toys from when they were kids. Maybe they do. I can't remember. I just you know it's that's definitely my guy. You know, the only one the only one that I kept. And we actually do we kept a toy from when my daughter was a baby, which is basically a little rat from IKEA called Ratty, and like. He, that that rat has been beat to hell and back and somehow he's still in the toy box and they refuse to give she refuses to give him up even though like she doesn't really play with him anymore she's like no no that's ratty ratty's gotta stay so that may be her toy who knows i think mom has my box somewhere yeah you know like i i, I just think it's nice to have you like if you have a toy that's special you might as well just display it somewhere you know why not like okay did i miscount okay we're good we're good okay it is yeah ratty has her back okay so it is 11 o'clock i am going to call it here guys um mostly because i'm kind of tired i'm tired and i'm gonna go sleep or drink some more bubbly and then probably go to sleep i don't know yet um let's see who we can raid if anybody that i swear that guinness account is going to send me just no. Ah ha ha! Meet the cork man leading the hunt for London's worst Guinness. After Jamie Dornan mentioned on the Graham Norton show, everything blew up. <laughs> Ryan the cork man. So, yeah. Uh, funnily enough, I'm actually from Cork. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. Let's okay. Let's just let's just take a, take a quick look and see who's online and if anyone did to do. do. Where is... Come on. No, go to Twitch. Twitch, is there anyone on that we can follow, that we can read into? No, it's kind of a bit too late. Oh, God. Just... I just want to let you guys know, okay, that Twitch is for some reason recommending to me some viewer called Amaranth who is playing geoguessr in a tiny bikini and looks like she has fake boobs and i cannot fathom why this is being recommended to me 
and I'm wondering what Twitch thinks about me. It's the weirdest fucking thing ever. I just... I don't know, guys. I just don't know. Okay. All right. We're going to we're gonna forego the raid. Let's, we'll do a raid some other day. Okay. Um, thanks very much for hanging out. Hope you, all, you guys all have a good Sunday night, Monday morning, whatever. Good time zone, wherever you are. Um, yeah. Take it easy, lads.